Have you ate tonight? You want food? You're good? I see you walking around every time I'm running. I was just wondering. I got you some I got you some food for tonight. You sure? Alright man. Well, that completely backfired on me. Looks like I'm gonna be eating some Burger King before I get to work. So that means that the intro is gonna have to, no, 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 not, not this video, not this video. Let's get to work. Today we are going to be working on this 2007 Yamaha R1. I have a whole lot of parts here. Come here and check it out. So we have the full fairing kit for this bike. It came with the air rams. I'm actually surprised that it came with that because those were like, I ordered them and they were $55. So Waiting for that refund for those. Now I don't have to order the air rams. Over here, I got a fairing kit for the 2007 CBR 600RR. Uh, that video will be coming out later this week. But yeah, this, this bike's gonna look really cool. I haven't seen anyone do the 07, uh, post any photos or anything with this um, style fairing kit on it. So I think that's gonna look really cool on that bike. But we come over here and I got a gauge cluster, a front wiring harness, a front stay bracket. We got our rear sets. Went with a cooler rear set than stock because this bike already had a cool rear set on it and those were like $100. We got our rear subframe because this subframe is jacked up. Gotta be real careful with this bike right there. That thing might fall over. Uh, aluminum radiator, rear tail light. Got tail light all jacked up too on this bike. Headlight assembly, seat and levers, grips. Couple little things laying around uh, over here in the shop. But the main part, that I stopped last video at was the rear swing arm. So this is the rear swing arm that I found on eBay, the correct one. See how this like coves in right here? Uh, right here is the swing arm that I ordered and the guy actually just sent me a refund and said I could keep this swing arm, so that's sweet. So let's get right into putting on the swing arm so, and getting those wheels on the bike so I can get it off the ground because it's really sketchy with the way it's sitting because this thing can just fall right over. So I think I'm gonna lay it back down and get that arm on it and yeah, let's uh, get right into it. For everyone that said just uh, hang that off of something, yeah, I got like 24 foot tall ceilings in here. It would be way harder to hang this off of something than just laying it here on its side. It really isn't that hard to do. Um, now I just gotta swap everything over from swing arms, slap that thing on there, get the wheel on. Putting on that swing arm right there was, it, it, it was pain. It was just an absolute pain. My hands are filthy from it. Every time I go to Walmart, they never have the good gloves anymore. They just have the really thin ones. So I don't end up buying them and I hate like getting all dirty like this. But I got that swing arm on there, I put it on and then I realized I had to put a spacer underneath it. And with the spacer, I had to loosen up the whole exhaust system to shimmy it in there. Now I got it on and I just got to tighten up everything and also I couldn't figure out which way like that, I guess it's called like a dog bone piece, the connector dog bone piece goes. So I had to look up the diagram to make sure that was the right way, but I should have just looked at the way the dirt was on this because um, it lines up perfectly that way. So I'm just going to tighten everything up on this and then strain it up. Actually before I strain it up I have to put the wheel on it, the front wheel on it. Okay, so I just got the swing arm right here and that was way harder than it needed to be. Um, it ended up taking me so long because I did not loosen this exhaust and it was just a pain in the butt to get on. Uh, I want to put on the rear sets on this bike, but uh, the rear sets hook up to the heat shield and they go into this bracket up here and this uh, subframe is broken, so I'm just going to start pulling apart this whole rear end and putting on this new subframe right here. This thing is mint. 
my camera ended up dying right here. I got the ECU out and then undid a couple little things. And you see this right here? It says seven pound maximum. I bet you it wasn't from the subframe getting hit. There might have been like eight pounds in that. You can never overfill those things. It just snaps the whole subframe. I'm just kidding, but I'm gonna pull all this stuff back off and get that subframe on there. And that'll be like the biggest part that I guess goes on this bike other than the swing arm. So we're making a lot of progress even though it doesn't look like it. So I'm definitely going to have to pull this tank off in order to pull the subframe. I thought I was just going to be able to undo that, but it's going to be way too complicated doing it that way. So I guess um, when I pull this tank off, I'm going to remove this piece and then pull off these, uh, these nice tank grips on it because I'm going to put that tank cover on it. I normally would never do the tank cover, but they sent it to me in the kit. So, and this dent really isn't that bad and it just pops right over that. You'll never be able to tell. I don't like doing that, but you know the red's not going to match up the best if I don't do it that way and this really is just a cosmetic dent in it so we'll put all this back on after we get the subframe got all this cleaned up there was quite a bit of a rat's nest going on in there and I still got to figure that out when I put everything back on it <laughs> So I got the subframe on here, got all the wiring, everything all cleaned up, ECU is inside of here, batteries in there, I kept the heat shield from the other subframe. Um, I pretty much took all the nice stuff off that subframe and put it on this. Um, it looks really good right here. I got this little plastic garment in that I've never seen on a bike before. That's just how you know this bike was mint before. All the plastics were OEM. I really prefer to rebuild a bike when everything was OEM before because normally when people do aftermarket stuff on the bikes, it's not nearly as nice. And I can literally pull off like all the little like garments and stuff off the OEM plastics and put them on the aftermarket stuff and then the bike looks and like feels like an OEM bike. But I got this uh, tank off and there's these wires right here that were spliced in half and they were supposed to be crimped together but they weren't crimped together so maybe that's why this bike isn't starting but I was gonna hook this back up because I thought this was for a trickle charger and I ran it up to here and I remember seeing this thing right here and it is for a trickle charger but it's for like a cigarette lighter situation or maybe that's for a cigarette lighter I don't know um, but I'm definitely gonna pull that off then I'm gonna slap this tank back on the bike So I just swapped over all the little plastics and holders. See these little like foam pieces on this? It's very important that um, if you do have an OEM set, try to peel them off and then put them on your uh, new set. But look at the color difference. I don't know if it'll show on camera, but this is way more candy than the OEM. And I think that's pretty sick. But I'm about to mount it on this tank and then put the cover on the tank after I pull off all the grips. Dang, I got this tank on and this ruby red looks so good. And I got these little side pieces on. The only thing I don't have is the steering stabilizer piece put in because I don't know if I'm going to put that back on this bike. But what I'm going to do now is put that under tail fairing on. I got it right here. I got this tail on right here and what I'm going to do now is I plugged in the main wiring harness. Uh, this wire actually is supposed to go underneath the subframe, so I gotta take this back off and then uh, weave it underneath and ha have it come through this uh, plug hole down here. 
but I have the harness for the turn signals. What I'm gonna do now is take where this plug goes into, uh, just test them, see which one makes it flash for the turn signal, then uh, just take whatever pin it is in this, wire it up to it, put the resistor in it, wrap it all up with electrical tape, and then put this in there. This uh, tail light all wired up properly. See, we got the turn signals on it. It's looking good, and this light is smoked out, so it looks really slick. I took off all the rubber and all the stuff that like sits in there. Also, I mocked on this top piece, didn't do that on camera, because I'm gonna take it back off, because um, to put on this uh, bottom piece properly, there's these little caps over there that go on top of uh, these mounts where the exhaust goes on, and I have to fix those exhausts before I mount them back up. But that exhaust runs up through here and there's these heat shield pieces. Let's see, you guys see it in there. That are, were on the old plastic. So you pull those off, uh, re-super glued them on there. And you can see this, uh, this new stuff looks really nice. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is start coming over here to the front, um, put on the front stay bracket. I got the front stay on right here and I know I'm starting to get a little bit ahead of myself because the only reason I put that front stay on there would be to get to the cosmetics stuff but I know there are bigger things I need to do before I can get to cosmetics. So I'm going to pull this radiator off, this thing is banged up and put this brand new aluminum one on. So I just pulled off all the fans and then the little garments that hold in this uh, new radiator. And this fan is good, nothing was uh, wrong with it on this side. But this is the side where the damage was, and look at this fan. And these were all bent up anyway, so I'm just going to order a whole new right side fan for this bike. But either way, I can put that fan in with the radiator mounted on the bike. So I'm going to mount that up right now. This radiator's looking really mint. Dang, look at that thing in there. Got all this stuff hooked up, just gotta wait for that fan to come in, and I figured out why this bike's not starting. For some reason, I thought this wiring harness right here had something to do with the controls, but it actually goes to all the spark plug coils, so I just plugged those in and didn't do anything, because I'd have to re-splice all this, repin it, and uh, wire that up. But what I'm gonna do now is put on the rear sets. So this new rear set, I actually have to remove this nut right here that goes on the motor mount and then I screw this in there and then slap that end of the rear set on there. So I'm gonna put these on both sides. These rear sets on and they look really good but they were very hard to get on for two reasons. One, there was absolutely no instructions and then they just like came in this box right here with nothing to it. I went on the website and I couldn't even find any like pictures of the bikes with the rear sets on, but I got this all on there. Um, this was complicated right here because I thought you kept the OEM piece, but they actually sent you that piece because this was uh, sitting down too far for the brake pedal. And then the way this heat shield locks in has nothing holding it in. Uh, like the Vortex sprocket sets are, but for $300 versus $100, these are pretty much the same things. This is in there all secure now. Um, but on this side, the design flaw I would say is right here, where you uh, tighten up the shifter linkage. Uh, is very hard to get in there, and I ended up doing it with uh, these long needle nose pliers because I could not get an Allen in there. But it's in there good now, and. Uh, that thing seems like it's going to shift really sweet. So I was coming over here to start working on the front end again. And once again, 
I can show you the eBay invoice. This was for an 07 to 08 Yamaha R1, and this is definitely for an 04 to 2006 because this plug does not match. And I looked at the pictures, and this plug is for the older ones because it's wider. And you guys say it's because I'm being cheap, but I have all these bikes, and I literally just write down what I need, and then I order uh, what I need. And I don't really look in depth of exactly what it is, so I need a new front wire and harness. But I think to finish up this video, I'm just going to put this front fender piece on. And that'll be it for now. So what I'll be getting to next video is uh, wiring that up, ordering the rest of the front air rams. I need a new handlebar and order a new rear seat. Other than that, like this bike is pretty close to being done even though it doesn't look like it. All I really had to do is put that front piece on with the windscreen, hook up the gauge cluster, new grips, new levers, slap the fairings on, and then we're good. Peace out.